So, good evening and welcome. Uh, I'm honored to open the Poetry Place International Festival, celebrating the International Poetry Day, which is today. Uh, my name is uh, Gilad Meiri, and I'm uh, part of the literary committee of uh, the festival with Atara Ben Hanan and uh, Noah Shakaji. You can say hello, uh, Noah and uh, Atara. I'm uh, happy to introduce Shira Stav, uh, who is an award-winning poetess, a translator of English literature and researcher. And Shira will host this uh, show and will shortly present Shira Notes. Some technical issues. Uh, your microphone will be muted uh, during the event, but uh, we will dedicate the last uh, 10 minutes uh, for your uh, questions and uh, that you may write in the chat box. And uh, now I'm uh, happy to pass the microphone to you, Shira, and wish you all a pleasant evening. Thank you, Gilad. Um, I am very excited and delighted to have Shira Notes with us. Um, for me, a singular, original, and the most unforgettable voice in poetry and not only for me, I see a lot of people here. Um, she's um, one of the most leading voices in American poetry today, and she's a winner of uh, several prestigious awards, including Pulitzer Prize that she won for her book, Stag Sleep, and the T.S. Eliot Prize and National Book Critics Circle Prize Award and uh, many, many other prizes, which uh, I don't want to take the whole time uh, naming them. So, um, uh, Sharon Olds um, published already uh, 11 books of poetry and some collections of her poetry. And of course, uh, she publishes her poems in uh, a lot of uh, uh, literary, um, magazines and um, and a lot of anthologies and uh, she is a professor of creative writing at New York University and her collection of uh, poems in Hebrew is uh, called The Floor of Our Life and today we will um, uh, read from this book and some other new poems from her uh, two recent books, one of them, which were published after The Floor of Our Life. Uh, one of them is Odes from 2016. And the other one is Areas from 2019. That, that's the recent one, okay? Uh, good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Shira. Thank you so much for having me and good morning to uh, everyone whose faces I see and those whose faces I don't see. I'm honored and excited to be here. Thank you. Uh, before we start reading poetry, I wanted to ask you, how did you feel during this year, which has been such a dramatic year in the US and in New York especially, and, and uh, during the pandemic? And do you feel that it creeps into your poetry right now, into your writing? And how did you experience this whole uh, issue of the pandemic? Well, I, I spent the last year in the woods in upstate New York. I think the most uh, striking thing about this year has been the grief and sorrow for the losses that so many families all over the world have uh, have experienced and my consciousness of how fortunate uh, I have been uh, all my life in um, in keeping safe and well so I see my own life in a diff in a new perspective against the background of what has always been a world of suffering and unfairness, injustice, hardship. And also we gather today to, to be together in poetry, which is uh, something that 
has helped our species uh, in however small a way ever since we began. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're safe and well. So um, I'm going to share the presentation that we made. And uh, I want to thank Atara for this presentation. So we're going to start with the first poem from your first book, Said and Says. Is that a surprise? <laughs> no, no. Machines okay. are always a surprise to me. Okay. Paper okay. is not a surprise. OK. Yeah. So I, I just going to say that yeah. uh, we decided to start with this poem because I feel it is such a, it, it encapsulates like the, the main issues of your early poetry. Thank you. Uh, it's, I am very excited to read this poem in public for the first time in probably 30 years. Wow. I, I forget that in the beginning, it was important to me 40 years ago as a 40 year old to open my first book with a poem that now oh, is, as, as, as seems in, to me in a way compared to a lot of my more recent poems, not very subtle. But then it's been very helpful to me to remember that I started in a way almost as a, um, well, as a poet of conflict, and the conflict here being between a religion and a child. And um, here is Satan Says. I am locked in a little cedar box with a picture of shepherds pasted onto the central panel between carvings. The box stands on curved legs. It has a gold heart-shaped lock and no key. I am trying to write my way out of the closed box, redolent of cedar. Satan comes to me in the locked box and says, I'll get you out. Say, my father is a shit. I say, my father is a shit and Satan, Satan laughs and says, it's opening. Say, your mother is a pimp. My mother is a pimp. Something opens and breaks when I say that. My spine uncurls in the cedar box like the pink back of the ballerina pin with a ruby eye resting beside me on satin in the cedar box. Say shit, say death, say fuck the father, Satan says down my ear. The pain of the locked past buzzes in the child's box on her bureau under the terrible round pond eye etched around with roses where self-loathing gazes at sorrow. Shit, death, fuck the father. Something opens, Satan says. Don't you feel a lot better? Light seems to break on the delicate Edelweiss pin carved into two colors of wood. I love him too, you know, I say to Satan dark in the locked box. I love them, but I'm trying to say what happened to us in the lost past. Of course, he says and smiles, of course. Now say, torture. I see through blackness soaked in cedar, the edge of a large hinge open. Say, the father's cock, the mother's cunt, says Satan, I'll get you out. The angle of the hinge widens until I see the outlines of the time before I was, when they were locked in the bed. When I say the magic words, cock, cunt, Satan softly says, come out. But the air around the opening is heavy and thick as hot smoke. Come in, he says, and I feel his voice breathing from the opening. The exit is through Satan's mouth. Come in my mouth, he says. You're there already, and the huge hinge begins to close. Oh, no, I love them, too. I brace my body tight in the cedar house. Satan sucks himself out the keyhole. I'm left locked in the box. 
He seals the heart-shaped lock with the wax of his tongue. It's your coffin now, Satan says. I hardly hear. I am warming my cold hands at the dancer's ruby eye, the fire, the suddenly discovered knowledge of love. Thank you, Sharon. I will now read it in Hebrew. Asatan Omer. אני נעולה בתיבת ארז קטנה ובתמונה של רועי צאן מודבקת אל הלוח האמצעי בין גילופים. התיבה עומדת על רגליים מעוקלות. יש לה מנעול זהב וצורת לב, ואין מפתח. אני מנסה לכתוב את דרכי החוצה מן התיבה הסגורה, המדיפה ריח ארז. השטן בא אליי בתיבה הנעולה ואומר, אני אוציא אותך. תגידי, אבא שלי חרא. אני אומרת, אבא שלי חרא, והשטן צוחק ואומר, זה נפתח, תגידי שאימא שלך סרסורית. אימא שלי סרסורית. משהו נפתח ונשבר כשאני אומרת את זה. עמוד השדרה שלי מתיישר בתיבת הארז, כמו צידה האחורי, הוורוד של סיכת הרקדנית עם עיני האודם המונחת לצידי על כר סטן בתיבת הארז. תגידי חרא, תגידי מוות, תגידי שאלך להזדיין אף, אומר השטן באוזני. כאב העבר הנאום מזמזם בתיבת הילדה על השיטה מתחת לברכת העין העגולה, הנוראה, המגולפת ורדים סביב, שם התיעוב העצמי מצ... מביט בצער. חרא, מוות, שילך להזדיין אהב, משהו נפתח. השטן אומר, את לא מרגישה הרבה יותר טוב? נראה שהאור נשבר על סיכת הלבונה העדינה, המגולפת בשני צבעי עץ. אני גם אוהבת אותו, אתה יודע. אני אומרת לשחור השטן בתיבה הנעולה. אני אוהבת אותם, אבל אני מנסה לומר מה קרה לנו בעבר האבוד. כמובן, הוא אומר, הוא מחייך. כמובן. עכשיו תגידי, עינוי. אני רואה מבעד השחור הרווי ארז, להב של ציר גדול נפתח. תגידי, הזין של האב, הכוס של האם, השטן אומר. אני אוציא אותך. זווית הציר מתרחבת עד שאני רואה את קווי המתאר של הזמן לפני שנולדתי, כשהיו נעולים במיטה. כשאני אומרת את מילות הקסם, זין, כוס, השטן אומר ברצ... ברכות, בואי, צאי. אבל האוויר סביב הפתח כבד וסמיך כעשן חם. היכנסי, הוא אומר, ואני מרגישה את קולו נושם מן הפתח. היציאה היא דרך פיו של השטן. בואי בפי, הוא אומר, את כבר שם, והציר הענק מתחיל להיסגר. או, oh, לא, אהבתי אותם, גם. אני מהדקת את גופי חזק בבית הארז, השטן יונק את עצמו החוצה דרך חור המנעול, אני נשארת נעולה בתיבה, הוא חותם את המנעול שצורתו לב בדונג לשונו. עכשיו זה ארון הקבורה שלך, השטן אומר. אני בקושי שומעת, אני מחממת את ידיי הקרות בעיני האודם של הרקדנית, האש. הידע שהתגלה לפתע על האהבה. Thank you. So, I wanted to ask something, Sharon. I, I don't know if it's a question, but, you know, I want to quote a line from, from a poem of yours, which is called West. You write there, I... I have always wanted to cross over into the other person, draw the other person over into me. I always felt that this is exactly what your poetry does. And to tell you the truth, as a translator of this poetry, I felt like the translation enables me to practice this exact crossing, you know? And um, 
I want to ask you, how do you feel today <laughs> looking at this poem? And do you still want to cross over to the other person? Though I feel that your poetry is still doing that. And it's such a powerful poem and such a powerful poetry till today. Thank you, Shira. It's so exciting to hear you read it in Hebrew and to look at it on the screen. Um, I think that I uh, believed when I was first writing that, uh, or I desired for the what I regarded as the life of an ordinary woman uh, in patriarchy, an ordinary straight woman raised a long time ago in a, uh, it wasn't found in poetry very much. And, and so I felt there were poems that hadn't been written yet that I could write, not because I was a good writer, but because there were, there was this voice, um, missing. And yes, I studied languages in college. The idea of um, being able to communicate uh, over the, the fence of, of our different languages was very moving and exciting to me. Uh, it's like a dream to see your faces now. Uh, and <laughs> Shira, I'm so grateful to you for um, uh, helping uh, uh, the, uh, the, this, this, this just furious poem of mine, uh, which burst out 40 years ago, um, helping it across the fence. It means so much to me when I read a poem from another culture, uh, and we're all in such trouble together on this planet that uh, mm, the better uh, we can hear each other and sing to each other, that, that gives one some, 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 some hope. Yeah, thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, you. You sang 40 years ago like, it's, like it was, you know, and like it's an ancient history. <laughs> but actually, you were a late bloomer, right? Yes. I mean, my first book came out when I was 37. Uh, I just wasn't writing well enough before then to even submit a poem to a magazine. I just, I didn't know what I was doing. And actually, during the pandemic, I realized that in some ways, I still didn't know what I was doing. You know, in terms of power and weakness, in terms of parents and children, nations who are haves and nations who are have-nots, this last year of my life has given me a just tremendous amount of education and, uh, and gratitude and um, sense of connection. Um, should we move to the next poem? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. I would like us to read um, The Farrier. Uh, this is... Just a second. You see that, right? Yes. So, and, and, I, this, and I have it. Okay. So this is this, from a book called The Father which I used to say when I was trying to keep a certain amount of distance between the apparent autobiographical nature of my writing, I would say this is a book, The Father, about the death of a father from the point of view of a daughter. This is not because I think it's not important whether we're writing about our own lives or not, but early on in my work, that's all that seemed to be interesting. Uh, uh, so I, I was sort of, um, I wasn't saying it wasn't autobiographical. I was just saying um, I, I had taken a vow not to declare whether it was or not. The Farrier. Three years after my father's death, he goes back to work. 
unemployed for 25 years. He's very glad to be taken on again, shows up on time, tireless worker. He sits in the prow of the boat, sweet cocks, turned with his back to the carried. He is dead, but able to kneel upright, facing forward toward the other shore. Someone has closed his mouth, so he looks more comfortable, not thirsty or calling out, and his eyes are open. There under the iris, the black line that appeared there in death. He is calm. He is happy to be hired. He's in business again. His new job is a joke between us, and he loves to have a joke with me. He keeps a straight face. He waits, naked, ivory bow, figurehead, ribs, nipples, lips, a gaunt, tall man. And when I bring people and set them in the boat and push them off, my father pulls them across the river to the far bank. We don't speak. He knows that this is simply someone I want to get rid of, who makes me feel ugly and afraid. I do not say the way you did. He knows the labor and loves it. When I dump someone in, he does not look back. He takes them straight to hell. He wants to work for me until I die. Then he knows I will come to him, get in his boat and be taken across, then hold out my broad hand to his, help him ashore. We will embrace like two who were never born, naked, not breathing, then up to our chins, we will pull the dark blanket of earth and rest together at the end of the working day. Thank you. Nahagama Borit. Shaloshanim Achremoto Shev Avi, who Kuzer Lavot. Kvar Srim Vahameshana, who Muftal. Vesameh me od Shema Sikimoto Shuv. Nikyatsev Bazman, Poel Bilti Nil E. הוא יושב בחרטו מסירה, הגי טוב מזג, גבו מופנה אל המובלים. הוא מת, אבל מסוגל לכרוע, זקוף, להישיר פנים אל אגדה אחרת. מישהו סגר את פיו, הוא נראה נינוח יותר, לא צמא או זועק, ועיניו כוחות, ותחת הקשתית הקו השחור שהופיע בה בשעת המוות. הוא שלב. הוא שמח להיות שכיר, לחזור לעניינים. עבודתו החדשה היא מין הלצה בינינו, והוא אוהב שיש בינינו הלצה. הוא מקפיד על פנים רציניים. הוא מחכה עירום, דמות שנהב מגולפת בחרטו מסירה, צלעות, פטמות, שפתיים, גבר כחוש וגבוה. וכשאני מביאה אנשים ומשיבה אותם בסירה ודוחפת אותם הלאה, אבי משית אותם, חוצה את הנהר אל הגדה הרחוקה. אנחנו לא מדברים. הוא יודע שזה רק מישהו שאני רוצה להיפטר ממנו, שגורם לי להרגיש מכוערת ומפוחדת. אני לא אומרת כמוך. הוא מכיר את העבודה ואוהב אותה. כשאני משליכה פנימה מישהו, הוא לא מסתובב להביט, הוא לוקח אותם ישר לגנום. הוא רוצה לעבוד בשבילי עד שאמות, והוא יודע. אז אבוא אליו, אכנס אל סירתו ואלקח אל העבר האחר. אז אושיט עליו את כף ידי הרחבה, אעזור לו לעלות אל החוף. מתחבא כמו שניים שמעולם לא נולדו, ערומים, לא נושמים, ואז נמשוך עד סנתר את צמיחת האדמה הכהה, וננוח יחד בסוף יום העבודה. Thank you. Thank you. So, I thought it's uh, very interesting uh, the way you portray the father as, as Karen. Who took, who transported the souls of the newly dead across the river Styx into the underworld. And it's a very, um, it's a kind of an uncanny um, role that you give him. 
you know. Uh, but I would like us to move to the next one, which is also from the father, and then maybe we will speak about it a little bit. My father speaks to me from the dead. My father speaks to me from the dead. I seem to have woken up in a pot shed on clay, on shards, the bright paths of slugs kiss crossing my body. I don't know where to start with this grime on me. I take the spider glue net, plug of the dead out of my mouth. Let's see if where I have been, I can do this. I love your feet. I love your knees. I love your are my legs. They are so long because they are yours and mine both. I love your, what can I call it, between your legs. We never named it the glint and purity of its curls. I love your rear end. I changed you once, washed the detritus off your tiny bottom. With my finger rubbed the oil on you. When I touched your little anus, I crossed wires with God for a moment. I never hated your shit. That was your mother. I love your navel, thistle, seed, fossil, even though it's her print on you. Of course I love your breasts. Did, me, did you see me looking up from within your daughter's face as she nursed? I love your bony shoulders, and you know I love your hair, thick and live as earth. And I never hated your face. I hated its eruptions. You know what I love? I love your brain, its halves and silvery folds like a woman's labia. I love in you even what comes from deep in your mother, your heart, that hard worker, and your womb. It is a heaven to me. I lie on its soft hills and gaze up at its rosy vault. I have been in a body without breath. I have been in the morgue, in fire, in the slagged chimney, in the air over the earth and buried in the earth and pulled down into the ocean. Where I have been, I understand this life. I am matter, your father, I made you. When I say now that I love you, I mean, look down at your hand, move it. That action is matter's love. For human love, go elsewhere. Thank you. This poem breaks my heart every time. Avim adaber alai min ametim. Nidmeh shitorati bemachsan kadim al chemar, al shvarim. ועל גופי נשיקות שתיו הערב, מנתיבים פעירים של ריר חשופיות. אני לא יודע מאיפה להתחיל כשהזוהמה הזאת עליי. אני מסיר מעל פי את רשת הדבק של האחבישים, שסתום המתים. בואי נראה אם אוכל לעשות את זה גם אחרי שהייתי שם. אני אוהב את כפות רגלייך, אני אוהב... את ברכייך. אני אוהב את הרגליים שלך, שלנו, שלי. הן ארוכות כל כך, כי הן שלך ושלי גם יחד. אני אוהבת, איך אוכל לקרוא לזה? בין רגלייך. מעולם לא נתנו לזה שם. הבוהק והטוהר של פיתוליו. אני אוהב את הקצה האחורי שלך. פעם החלפתי לך, ניקיתי את השפוכת מישבנך הזעיר ובאצבעים ערכתי עלייך את השמן. כשנגעתי בפי הטבעת הקטן שלך, עליתי על הקו של אלוהים לרגע. אף פעם לא שנאתי את החרא שלך, זו הייתה אימך. אני אוהב את הטבור שלך, זרע קוץ מאובן, גם אם זו טביעת ידה שלה בך. מובן שאני אוהב את שדייך. האם ראית איך אני נושא את עיניי מתוך פניה של בתך כשהיא ענקה? אני אוהב את כתפייך הגורמות, ואת יודעת שאני אוהב את שערך המלא והחי כמו אדמה. ומעולם לא שנאתי את פנייך, שנאתי את ההתפרצויות שלהם. את יודעת מה אני אוהב? אני אוהב את המוח שלך, את שני חצאיו ואת כפליו הכסופים, כשפתי עריית אישה. 
אני אוהב בך אפילו את מה שבא עמוק מתוך אימך, את ליבך, הפועל השחור, ואת רחמך, בשבילי הוא גן עדן. אני שוכב על גבעותיו הרכות ומביט מעלה על קימרון השושנים שלו. חייתי בגוף חסר נשימה, חייתי בחדר המתים, באש, בסיגי הערובה, באוויר על פני האדמה, והורדתי אל תוך האוקיינוס. איפה שלא חייתי, אני מבין את החיים האלה. אני חומר, אני אביך, אני עשיתי אותך. כשאני אומר עכשיו שאני אוהב אותך, אני אומר, הביטי מטה אל כף ידך, הני אותה. התנועה הזאת היא אהבת החומר. אהבת אנוש, חפשי במקום אחר. Thank you, Sharon, for this poem. Thank you so much, Sharon. It's so exciting to hear it in Hebrew, which to me is an earthy sound, earth sound as the letters sometimes look like little uh, or big houses, safe houses, shelter, home. <laughs> And to hear all the consonants, it's so thrilling. It's like the poem going into matter, into matter itself further. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, it's a mother's love. <laughs> um, you know, what I wanted to, I, I don't know if it's a question, but the family in your poems, it seems to be like the most dramatic and intensive and dangerous place uh, for your life, you know? Uh, where one is, The, the relationships are so intense, so deep, so fundamental. Um, you could how, say it's a place where the power relationships in the, in the human in the world are most apparent, especially to a child right away. And where we notice the difference between good government, And safety and the house, the roof that uh, protects us from the elements and danger. So human power, whether it's in the family or in the governments or, or in class, in race, in gender, that is something I noticed from when I was a, a little kid. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I now that I look back on so much of my life, I am not sorry that that's what I wrote about. I don't think now, like if I had written only about power and family and not about sexual love, I would feel now that I had not wasted my life, but that I had really left out half of what matters to me yeah. so much. Yes. It's also like a, a school, you know, a, a school of, of feelings. The family where you where you learn about love, about hate, about grief, about pleasure, about rage, about betrayal, about every about sex, everything, everything you need to know is is there right? and I grew up in a culture where one was not supposed to speak about anything important. So that's part of why I was thinking today about Satan says, I thought of Joan Baez saying about Bob Dylan, you burst on the scene, an unwashed phenomenon. So I was surprised that anyone would publish anything I wrote uh, back then. I was a bit, I didn't realize how much of an unwashed phenomenon I was. <laughs> And in the beginning, they didn't want to publish it, right? No, no, right. But everyone goes through, or most of us go through some rejection. I went through my uh, plenty of rejection, and some of it very angry. But that makes sense, because I wasn't coming to say the way things are is good. 
Yes. Part of the way things are is gorgeous. And partly it's unfair and dangerous to us as a species. Yes. So uh, I'm going to put the next poem, which is First Hour. Thank you, Durham. Just oh, yes. Yes. First Hour. First Hour. That hour. Oh, I'll wait till, till we see it. Yes. Here it is. That hour, I was most myself. I had shrugged my mother slowly off. I lay there taking my first breaths as if the air of the room was blowing me like a bubble. All I had to do was go out along the line of my gaze and back, out and back on gravity's silk. The pressure of the air, a caress, smelling on myself, her creamy blood. The air was softly touching my skin and tongue, entering me and drawing forth the little sighs I did not know as mine. I was not afraid. I lay in the quiet and looked and did the wordless thought. My mind was getting its oxygen direct, the rich mix by mouth. I hated no one. I gazed and gazed and everything was interesting. I was free, not yet in love. I did not belong to anyone. I had drunk no milk yet. No one had my heart. I was not very human. I did not know there was anyone else. I lay like a god for an hour. Then they came for me and took me to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Party's over. <laughs> <laughs> and the real uh and the real day has begun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sha Arishana. Basha hi Haiti Hachi Ani. Nechlatsti le iti me me shahti shall venashanti at Nashimotaya Rishonot. Ke ilu ni perhoti avira cheder kmo bua. כל שהיה עליי לעשות הוא להוליך את מבטי הלוך ושוב, הלוך ושוב על משי הגרביטציה. לחץ האוויר היה ליטוף, הרחתי על עצמי את דמה החלק הסמיך. האוויר נגע ברוך באורי ובלשוני, חדר אליי ומשך ממני את ההנחות הקטנות, שלא ידעתי שהן שלי. לא פחדתי. שכבתי בשקט והתבוננתי וחשבתי את המחשבה חסרת המילים. מוחי קיבל את החמצן הדרוש לו ישירות, את התערובת העשירה דרך הפה. לא שנאתי איש, הבטתי והבטתי. והכל היה מעניין, הייתי חופשייה, לא התאהבתי עדיין, לא השתייכתי לאיש, לא גמעתי שום חלב עדיין. איש לא לקח את ליבי, לא הייתי אנושית מאוד, לא ידעתי שיש מישהו אחר, שכבתי כמו אל לשעה. ואז באו אליי ולקחו אותי אל אימי. Your voice is so beautiful, Shira. Oh, thank you. It's What so a compliment. Cool. It's, it's, it's very strong and it's gentle at the same time. It enters my hearing and my soul with a, with a great kindness. Thank you. Thanks. Um, it is very typical that your poems are not written in stanzas most of the times, but like uh, with long monologues. complete and whole is there do you see any reason for that i call or i have called it uh not with any sense of knowledge or critical intelligence but i call that shape a clump to me meaning it's not it's not the stanza form certainly for me the church hymns i was raised on were in stanza form And they were very bad poetry also. But I also heard the Psalms in English and they were very great poetry. So for me, 
uh, once I started writing my own work, I, I didn't want it to be in sections mostly. Um, my next book is, will be called Ballads, and it has a whole part that's in sections. But uh, for most of the time, I wanted it to sound a little more like ordinary speech than like the stanza form that I was born into in a lot of English poetry. And calling it a clump is sort of like a natural object, like half a tree trunk or with some dribbles off the end of the line. Um, I very much relate to the shape in American English of poems of mine and that straight spine to the left, my left, wherever we are <laughs> uh, today, and then the uh, pine cones and the little needles of the conifer dribbling off the end. I guess to you would be, oh no, that's right. We're well matched as mirror beings today. Exactly, we? exactly. Cheryl, I'm so uh, sorry that you cannot read the comments in the in the chat because people write in Hebrew, but there are a lot of comments here saying how powerful this poetry and how brave and fearless and uh, and strong. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Thank you. Now, I I am not a brave person. I am a coward. I am fearful <laughs> of the dark and of people. N not you, not us. But, um, oh, there's a child. Oh, I'm seeing a child on the other side of the earth. Al-Mokolot. Yes. Shalom. <laughs> Beautiful child. Wow. I forget what I was saying. I saw a child. <laughs> you said that you were yeah. a coward. A coward. <laughs> but I had this feeling that God could not, this isn't, this isn't the God uh, of, the, of the chosen people. This is the punishing God of the, you know, 17th century British punishment gang of kings and queens and horror. Um, I somehow thought that he couldn't see what I was writing if I hunched over my desk. <laughs> That's what I told myself. In other words, I was willing to be a little crazy, a little imaginative. Did I really believe God couldn't see it? No, but somehow I knew it wasn't his business. And so I could write as truly as I could. I could at least try. And you know, I imagine we're all poets together here today. No one sees what we write unless we choose to put it out in the world. And of course, I'm from before, uh, what's it called? Medium socialism, social me medium. I, you know, here's my social media tool. And you've seen my paper. Yes. So, that idea of initial privacy in the life of a writer has been very precious to me as a coward and yet someone who wants to try to become able to sing my own truth, even though here I am, just, you know, a girl from Berkeley. <laughs> a privileged wasp from a ruling class country. I mean, I have to remember all that I have learned, but when I was a child, I did not know I was coming from a point of ease and and privilege, especially in my family, because you know you couldn't really see my power over them very yes, very easily. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So uh, we're going to move now to Stag Sleep. I'm afraid uh, we don't have uh, much time for all the poems we were planning to read. Um, but let's, let's read the uh, known to be left. Good, here's some water. Known to be left. Can't separate it. Known to be left. If I pass a mirror, I turn away. I do not want to look at her and she does not want to be seen. 
Oh, I should say this is from Stag's Leap is a book of divorce poems. It is a, a book from the point of view of a left wife, known to be left. If I pass a mirror, I turn away. I do not want to look at her and she does not want to be seen. Sometimes I don't see exactly how to go on doing this. Often when I feel that way, within a few minutes I am crying, remembering his body or an area of it, his backside often, a part of him just right now to think of, luscious, not too detailed, and his back turned to me. After tears, the chest is less sore, as if some goddess of humanness within us has caressed us with a gush of tenderness. I guess that's how people go on without knowing how. I am so ashamed before my friends to be known, to be left by the one who supposedly knew me best. Each hour is a room of shame and I am swimming, swimming, holding my head up, smiling, joking, ashamed, ashamed, like being naked with the clothed or being a child, having to try to behave while hating the terms of your life. In me now, there's a being of sheer hate, like an angel of hate. On the badminton lawn, she got her one shot, pure as an arrow, while through the eyelets of my mouth, the no seams bit the flesh, no one seems now to care to touch. In the mirror, the torso looks like a pinup hives martyr, or a cream pitcher speckled with henbit and pussy paws, full of milk of human kindness and unkindness, and no one is lining up to drink. But look, I am starting to give him up. I believe he is not coming back. Something has died inside me, believing that, like the death of a crone in one twin bed, as a child is born in the other. Have faith, old heart. What is living anyway but dying? Thanks. <laughs> אני לא רוצה להסתכל עליה, והיא לא רוצה להיראות. לפעמים אני לא יודעת איך בכלל אפשר להמשיך. בדרך כלל, כשאני מרגישה ככה, בתוך דקות אני בוכה, נזכרת בגוף שלו או בחלק ממנו, בדרך כלל באחוריו, בדיוק החלק שנכון לחשוב עליו מפתה, לא מפורט מדי, וגבו פונה ממני. אחרי הדמעות החזה כואב פחות, כאילו מין אלה של אנושיות ליטפה אותנו בתוכנו בשטף של הרכות. אולי ככה אנשים מצליחים להמשיך בלי לדעת איך. אני כל כך מתביישת מפני חבריי להיות זו שנעזבה בידי מי שכנראה הכיר אותי יותר מכל. כל שעה היא חדר בושה ואני שוחה. שוחה, מחזיקה את הראש מעל המים, מחייכת, מתלוצצת, מתביישת, מתביישת. כמו להיות ערומה בין הלבושים, או להיות ילדה ואת חייבת להשתדל להתנהג יפה, גם כשאת שונאת את החיים שלך. עכשיו בתוכי ישות של שנאה גמורה, כמו מלאכית של שנאה. על מגרש הבדמינטון, היא ניצלה את ההזדמנות לחבטה האחת הנקייה כחץ, שמבעד להריג החולצה יבחושים עוקצים את הבשר שבו כבר איש אינו רוצה לגעת. במראה נראה התורסו כמו דוגמנית של קדושה מעולה, או כמו כת שמנת מנומר פרחי לילך וציפורני חתול, מלא בחלב החביבות האנושית והרוע. ואיש אינו מתייצב לשתות ממנו. אבל תראו, אני מתחילה לוותר עליו. אני מאמינה שלא ישוב. משהו מת בתוכי כשאני מאמינה בזה. 
כמו זקנה בלה שמתה בצידה אחד של מיטה כפולה בשעה שבצד האחר נולד ילד. קצת אמונה לב ותיק. מה זה לחיות אחרי הכל, אם לא למות? Um, thank you. I... Sharon, we don't have much uh, time left, so what do you say that in order to read the last poem, we will skip to no makeup? Of How course. do you feel about that? No makeup is from your recent book, Areas, and the, yeah. reason, the reason I want us to read it is that I feel that you don't only talk about yourself there, about you not putting makeup on, but it is actually about your poetry, a poetry with no makeup. Right? Oh, <laughs> that's cool. I hadn't thought of that. And I'm sure that Ode to the Clitoris and Ode to the Penis will not mind waiting their turn in the books uh, to be heard by yes. my present community of friends today. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is, no makeup. Maybe one reason I do not wear makeup is to scare people. If they're close enough, they can see something is different with me, something unnerving, as if I have no features. I'm embryonic, pre-eyebrows, pre-eyelids, pre-mouth. I am like a water bear talking to them or an amniotic traveler, a vitreous floater on their own eyeball, human ectoplasm risen on its hind legs to discourse with them. And such a white, white girl, such a sickly toadstool, so pale, a visage of fog, a fizz of mist above a graveyard, no magenta roses, no floral tribute, no goddess, no grown-up woman, no acknowledgement of the drama of secondary sexual characteristics, just the gray matter of spirit talking. The thin features of a gray girl in a gray graveyard, granite, ash, chalk, dust. I tried the paint, but I could feel it on my skin. I could hardly move under the mask of my desire to be seen as attractive in the female way of 1957, and I could not speak. And when the makeup came off, I felt actual as a small mammal in the woods with a speaking countenance or a basic primate having all the expressions that evolved in us to communicate. If my teenage acne had left scars, if my skin were rough instead of soft, I probably couldn't afford to hate makeup or to fear so much the beauty salon or the very idea of beauty ship. And my mother was beautiful. Did I say that? In my small eyes and my smooth withered skin, you can see my heart. You can read my naked lips. Thank you. בלי איפור. אולי סיבה אחת שאני לא מתאפרת היא כדי להפחיד אנשים. אם הם קרובים מספיק, הם יכולים לראות שמשהו בי שונה, משהו מערער, כאילו אין לי תווי פנים, אני עוברית, טרום גבות, טרום עפפיים, טרום פה, מין דובון מים שמדבר אליהם, חולייתה נוסע, נווט זבוב איתי, צף על גלגל עינם. אקטופלזמה אנושית המתרוממת על רגליה האחוריות לשוחח עימם. ובחורה כזאת, לבנה לבנה, פטרייה חולנית כזאת, חיוורת כל כך, פני ערפל, ארשת דוק מעל בית קברות, בלי שושני ארגמן, בלי תשורת פרחים, בלי אלה, בלי אישה בוגרת, בלי אישור לדרמה של סימני המין המשניים, רק החומר האפור של רוח מדברת. התווים הדקים של בחורה אפורה בבית קברות אפור, גרנית, אפר, גיר, אבק. ניסיתי את הצבע, אבל יכולתי לחוש אותו על אורי. בקושי יכולתי לזוז מתחת למסכת התשוקה שלי להיראות מושכת בסגנון הנשי של 1957. 
ולא יכולתי לדבר. וכשחוסר האיפור, סליחה, וכשהוסר האיפור, הרגשתי ממשית כמו יונק קטן ביער, עם פנים עזי ביטוי, או אחד מראשוני הפרימטים עם כל האבהות שפיתחנו כדי לתקשר. אילו צילקו אותי פצעי הבגרות, אילו היה לי אור מחוספס ולא רך, קרוב לוודאי שלא יכולתי לשנוא איפור, או לחשוש כל כך ממכון היופי ומעצם רעיון ההתייפות. ואימי הייתה יפה, כבר אמרתי, בעיניי הקטנות, באורי הכמול העדין, אפשר לראות את ליבי, אפשר לקרוא את שפתיי הערומות. Thank you. I don't know, uh, Gilad, if we have time for a question or two? Uh, we have time for one question. And, okay. Uh, I'll read it. It's uh, from okay. uh, Sharon Shakarji. Uh, how does a poet who calls himself uh, a coward write so uh, personally and openly? Isn't it difficult to invite others into such private spaces? I think that I am very good at the psychological gift called denial. So, and also, I think, though I am afraid, my desire is much bigger than my fear. So I am a, a genuine coward, but at the same time, my desire to make a song that um, is true for me and to send it out in case it's true or interesting for anyone else, is so exciting that um, it, it uh, I don't want to use the, <laughs> the old evil word. I won't say it trumps my fear, but I will say that my desire is greater than my fear. And also I can tell myself while I'm writing, no one's going to see this. And then no one ever will see most of what I write because it's not good enough. To send out. So I guess it's a partly like an illusion, though where I began, uh, uh, no one was going to see what I was writing and no one ever would have if I hadn't finally gotten to the point of, where my, of sending it out. My longing for the community, such as we have here today together, was much stronger than my fear of, of you know, also once you get over the fear that you're going to roast in hell forever, it's <laughs> a little easier to deal with other fears. Okay. <laughs> um, I can't believe we, we're done. I feel like we could go on forever. <laughs> Let's um, go on forever in some <laughs> way. together in some way. Let's do that. Yes. Uh, Sharon, I want to thank you so much, not only for this conversation, but for the joy and desire and love and poetry that you brought into my life and, the, and into the life of everyone here. Thank so you. Thank, thank you. you so much. It was great meeting you in person like that. Me too. Me too to you all. Take care, be well, stay well, be safe. Thank you. I want to Me thank too. you, uh, Shira. I want to thank you, Sharon. And uh, you may uh, look at the chat box and see all these uh, beautiful blessings. We had a graceful evening, very tender, very powerful, uh, inspiring. And that's a beautiful beginning uh, for the festival. Uh, it's a, the, a lot of spiritual gifts were handed out here freely. And uh, we all wish to thank you for this. And uh, uh, I wish to uh, invite you, all of you uh, at 8.30 uh, Israel time. It's uh, half an hour from now to uh, the next event. Uh, which is in honor of publishing of Nano Poetica 21, Russian Poetry, 1970 to 2020. The editor of the anthology, Tino Moshkovitz, hosting Mikhail Grunas, Alexandra Petrova, and uh, Dimitri Kuzmin. 
So uh, we have a, a short break to see what's going on in the elections. Nobody really cares. So <laughs> uh, thank you again, uh, Shiva and Sharon. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.